Welcome, coaches, to another episode of The Best Damn Coach. And today I have one of my friends slash community building experts slash FBL graduate to join us. And so I am um, super pumped to have Haley Westfall here today. So welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I love to give the backstories to how we connected because I think it's important to uh, my audience to know that I'm not just taking cold pitches off my email list, although I they, they do sometimes intrigue me. Um, sure. But the reason we connected, we'd run in the same, we live similar spaces, but you and your amazing business partner created a community. And I was definitely in a place where I was kind of hunting for communities. Um, I had the opportunity to speak to that community. And when I had the opportunity to step into that room and speak, I was like, Oh, these girls are my people and, um, have, you know, been a part of Collapse since then. But I love for you to just acquaint the audience with who you are and kind of talk about you didn't always do this. Yeah. Um, you weren't always a community builder. So tell us a little bit about what brought you into this moment right now. Yeah, for sure. I will try to keep it brief. So very Cliff's Notes version. I actually spent about 20 years in corporate leadership before becoming an entrepreneur. I didn't get here the pretty way. I was laid off. I had a corporate position elimination and landed here really out of necessity. Uh, dabbled in social media strategy, social media management for a couple years. And really last year came to this pivotal crossroads in my business where my health on the personal side was really at an all-time low. And it kind of caused me to put a pause on the things I was doing and really get better aligned with the way that I wanted to show up and serve. Um, about a year prior to that, I had launched this community that Amanda is referring to called Collab Culture with one of my very best friends because I was really craving a community that felt distinctly different. Um, and so we had that business. I had my coaching business as well. And really over the course of the last year have burned to the ground and rebuilt a really newly invigorated offer suite that feels really, really aligned with the way that I was intended to lead. For context, I have a master's degree in leadership and just an innate passion for people. And I just felt like the way I was serving previously was not fully aligned with that. So fast forward to now, I am the co-founder, like she said, of Collab Culture, which is a community for female entrepreneurs and professionals here in Arizona. I also have a coaching business where I help female founders really create strategic scaling for their big vision by leveraging a magnetic community and purpose-driven relationships and really building that solid infrastructure for their growth. Um, I do a lot of in-person events. And I also host my own podcast called The Table, which has really become kind of the mascot and symbolism for the way that I serve people today. I love it. I think you did a really good job on that Cliff Notes version. Thank so kudos you. to you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I think that it's really interesting. You know, I, I look back and I spent the majority of my business as a hermit from my, um, you know, my office and my first house, which was posed as basically a second guest room or a place where one of us would go to sleep if we had small kids and we couldn't <laughs> all fit in the tiny little bed or whatever. And yeah. um, I built an online business for always. My business has always been online because I out of necessity too, because it was just easy for my family and I could make money and be around the kids schedule. And so I'll never forget. I was talking with a friend who was a sales coach and was, she was like, do you ever go into like real life and meet other humans? <laughs> wear and real I was kind of like, <laughs> yeah, like in real wear, wear, wear real outfits. I was kind of like, <laughs> oh, that's a thing. <laughs> but truthfully, because I'd stumbled into entrepreneurship, I didn't know that communities and events, you know, you know, like groups of entrepreneurs of women were getting together in real life. I was only acquainted to the communities I had joined online. And so mm -hmm. um, had the amazing experience of one of my clients opening a community, a small community. And I love the energy there. But I also knew that I was seeking like diversity in those because they all yeah. brought me like different things. And that's when I, you know, met you and Steph. And when I walked into that room at Collab, you know, it was just super fun. The energy was diverse. And I was just so intrigued by like how how does how do you build something like this very organically? So I'd love for you to share maybe behind the scenes around. I know you didn't set out for the growth that you guys experienced necessarily, mm -hmm. but what would you attribute that growth to specifically? 
Yeah. If we go back in time a little bit, so Stephanie and I have been friends now. I feel like I'm going to age myself by dating this, but I think for almost 30 years, like we've literally been Dang, friends. I didn't know it was that long. Yeah. We've been friends since we were kids. My dad was actually a club softball coach and her younger sister and my younger sister played on the same team and my dad was their coach. So that's how we originally became friends way back in the day and have kind of gone through every season of life together. And a couple years ago, probably about a little less than a year before Collab was founded, we were just talking about how we kind of both landed to uh, in entrepreneurship unconventionally. And we were going to some of these other spaces and we would meet up for coffee and we're like, oh, we like this. Don't love this. You know, what would it look like if we could take all the best parts that we love? Like if we could only find a place that was like the best things that we love and we could just like forego the things that didn't feel super aligned. And we found ourselves on this treasure hunt, if you will, trying to find this this golden goose. And we weren't finding it. And we just really felt a calling on our heart where it was like, if you can't find it, build it. And whoever it's for, that's who it's going to align for. And so it was over the course of almost a year. And I remember so distinctly, it was right around Thanksgiving. And I called her and I was like, the time is now. I don't know what it is. The time is now. We just need to do it. And she's like, it's so weird. I was literally just thinking the same thing. And I'm like, forget it. Two, we gave ourselves 60 days. We're like, we're going to throw it together. We're going to have this like little intimate dinner and we're going to pitch 12 women that we know that are local entrepreneurs. We're going to meet at this little coffee shop that Amanda and I both frequent regularly. And it's going to be great. And that's going to be our community, right? These are going to be our people. So we plan this thing for that January. We have these women over to her house. We have this dinner and we're like, does this idea suck? (laughs) Yes or no? Do you want to hang out with us? And they're like, we love it. And we're like, okay, cool. Done. Check. We did it. That was it. We're just going to put it up and see if maybe we have a couple stragglers that want to hang out with us and do this thing. We launched it the next day. And within 72 hours, we had like 45 people signed up. And we were like, well, crap. (laughs) I guess we're not meeting at the coffee shop. Um, And it was just really crazy to see just that compound impact of like people were craving it. But nobody was in a place where they were willing to take that scary first step, right? Because nobody Mm -hmm. wants to feel rejected. Nobody wants to put their big idea out there. And then they're like, oh, nobody wants to sit with me at lunch, right? It goes back to like our childhood experience. High school drama. (laughs) Right, of being like isolated. And so it just took us being willing to do it. And now over the course of the last two years, the impact that it's created in our community has been huge. And literally all of our growth has been word of mouth referrals And Instagram. Those are really the two places that people find us, but it's mostly word of mouth referrals from people that have either come to our events, they're on our membership, or they're just people who know us out in the community and just love the work that we're doing. So it's been really, really cool to see that our big vision and what we were wanting has felt aligned with so many other people. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I have a lot of questions from what you said because I think there's people listening and I think community can look, uh, a variety of ways. But when I think community, um, because I've spent so much time in the online space, I immediately in my brain go to like free Facebook groups. And I don't know if you and I have had this conversation. Those make me want to vomit. Like it's not my jam. (laughs) Um, And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like that was an old season of life. Um, But there's so many ways to, to, build community um, that I think we, we often overlook. And I think there's elements of community that every single business needs. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, like, by building this community, what do you, how how has that directly benefited you uniquely in your business endeavors and your, your partner as well? But like, what are the benefits of having community overall? Yeah, I think the thing that we had to get humble with real quick, and this is bi-directional, right, is that it's not about us. It's not about Stephanie and I. And that is both really freeing from the weight that it puts on your shoulders as a facilitator to be everything for everyone, when really, quite frankly, we're the least people that, that it's about. It's really around creating that culture and that connection for everyone to turn 
you know, towards one another. And so I think us alleviating that stress off of us not only allows a community to really focus on each other rather than, you know, Stephanie and I on a stage all the time. And it also allows us to not feel the weight of that because it's really everybody's community just as much as it is ours. I think I'd be lying if I said I don't get business from members of Collab. I mean, I'm front and center for them on a regular basis. They see me all the time. I am a very servant leader. I am the first person to want to be helping other people, to be connecting people with one another. And I think because of that, I do become front of mind for them in a lot of other ways. Um, but for me, it's really, a, it's allowed me to find hope in entrepreneurship. Because like I said, I landed here it was a little dark, right? It wasn't, yeah, it sure. wasn't the, the bright and shiny, like I have arrived. I am a business owner. You know, we went from making a lot of money to making no money real quick. And I had to get scrappy and figure out what I was going to do. And that was at a time when my kids were still pretty small and I was used to being around people 24 seven in an office and I'm such a people person. And then I was like, wait, I go, I'm supposed to just like sit at home by myself. And, and do this like, thing alone. Like, and like you were saying at the beginning, and like not wear real pants. And like, <laughs> do we brush our hair? Like, I'm not really sure what the rules are. And so for me, it was, it was really giving me that light of like, I can create that, right? If the culture is not created for me because I'm not in that corporate environment anymore, I now get the freedom to create the space that I feel aligned with and really call in the people that that feels aligned for too. So I think for mm -hmm. us is just been a really cool opportunity to create impact for other people. Um, but for us also to just continue to share our mission and really the impact that we want to create, not only for other people in their business, but for our own personal growth as leaders and also for the impact it can create here locally in the community. Yeah, it's so true. I, I'm thinking though about like fast forward to now, kind of where you're supporting other entrepreneurs and why is having some element of community or being plugged into community like a absolute must, mm -hmm. specifically for coaches, obviously, because we're talking to coaches, but why is it critical in this world that we live in now that we be plugged in or create or have some sort of connection to community ourselves. Yeah, I think for me, the number one thing I think of is trust. And I think by fostering relationships with people, we're in such an age of digital consumption where we are getting hammered 24 seven with everybody's offer, everybody's, you know, sales pitch, everybody's whatever information that they have. And it becomes really easy to get caught up in this hustle of trying to keep up and trying to grind and trying to create you know, all of this um, inbound flow into your business. And one of the things that I actually teach in my program is you actually don't, you don't have to work that hard because if you really pour into creating this strong foundational structure where maybe I serve people in this capacity and you serve people that is a, I, you know, a similar audience, if you will, right? Our demographic is similar, but we're serving them in different ways. We have the opportunity to really cross leverage like audiences and really create more complex pound growth faster in whatever capacity that feels aligned for you by really creating those partnerships and creating that brand awareness amongst people that you can trust. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm looking for something, I am going to be far more likely to take a personal recommendation from a friend or somebody that I trust than I am from like an Instagram, Instagram. ad, right? Yeah, or something sure. that, that hits my inbox. And so I think by creating that, we all know on entrepreneurship can feel isolating. And so not only is it helping to support us from, you know, a foundational perspective of just having people who get it that are in a similar season of life, you know, we kind of say entrepreneurship, we're kind of crazy, we're like the kooky yeah. ones. And so finding people who not only get that, but also are able to help support the growth of your business. I think if you were to go to collab culture today, I would be shocked to find a single person that has not found growth within their business, whether it's getting a new client, whether it is, you know, creating some sort of implementation in their business, whether it is just on, honestly growing their confidence as a business yeah, owner. Sure. I would be shocked to find a single person that does not had monumental impact from plugging into this community. Now, I will say this is my cliff note. Showing up is not enough. 
(laughs) simply showing up is not enough. So if you're going to be, you know, facilitating community or participating, you have to engage, you have to give in order to get. And if you are willing to do that, literal magic, like magic will ensue, but you have to be willing to do the work. Well, and I think through all of this, though, as I'm hearing you talk, it's really a reframe of the definition of community. We're not talking about physically building a community rather, but like really pouring in and nurturing relationships Mm -hmm. at the core of that. And I think that's where we often miss out is having a podcast like we're doing right now is actually relationship building, right? It's building community because you and I are building relationships and trust and extending our network. But also the listenership is a facet of community because just by the sheer nature of podcasting, Mm -hmm. there's heightened trust and authority that is developed because we get to like, there's so much like 70% of, you know, 30%, I think, is verbal. 70% is nonverbal. That's why I'm a fan of video work too. (laughs) Um, But like understanding that just by listening to someone, like we start to like get them, we can tell if our personalities jive, it builds unconscious trust. So there's so many ways, you know, that relationships really happen that are beyond the quote unquote traditional terms of community. For sure. And that was a huge reason. I mean, I just launched my podcast about a month and a half ago. And that was a huge calling that I felt just from listening to podcasts like yours and other ones that I like binge was like, I feel so connected to this person, even though like, obviously, we know each other in real life. But in other cases, sometimes you don't. And it really allows you to feel like you're in the car chatting with your best friend, right? Listening to them talk about whatever that subject is while also gaining value at the same time. And I love that you shared like there is not one, there is not a one size fits all model, right? There's not a template that it has to look a certain type of way, just as much as our community of like 140 women and collab culture is massively impactful for me. So is my self created mini mastermind that I have with three of my best friends that the internet gifted me and we all run communities and have coaching businesses. And that has just served me in a completely different way. So I want if you're listening and you're like, it feels like a lot, it feels overwhelming. Just know there's not a prescriptive framework, if you will, that it has to look like you have the ability to choose, which is honestly quite a gift. Yeah, totally agree. So you mentioned at the beginning, you kind of had this burn it down moment in business in the last year. And I kind of had like a front row seat to watching your brain start to turn and be in more in alignment, which I I love and I'm a huge fan of. But I also had the opportunity to have you as a student inside the Framework Builder Lab, because as you were going through this process, I could see like wheels turning. And I was like, hey, Haley, come join us. Because even though to your point, you felt like you kind of had this methodology and process and knew there would be a lot of nuggets for you to glean to only improve, you know, the entire experience. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to just like walk back and share a little bit of like where you were at that process of ready to jump into kind of this not new side of you, but this front, like this front facing side of you to grow your next program and what you feel like was like a hurdle for you at that point. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm definitely like a visionary brain. So I have lots of ideas. I have all the great ideas and sometimes can tend to get caught in the weeds of getting debilitated by details. And so in my mind, when we had actually talked about this, I was like, oh yeah, I've spent all this time and I've built this framework out and you know, I know what it's going to be. But what I didn't say is all of the little steps I had created for myself, the to-do list and all of these granular aspects that I had to have done before this thing got off the ground. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, I'll do it. Like what can hurt? I love Amanda. Like she's so knowledgeable. I'm sure there's things that I'm going to gain, but I really quite frankly, didn't realize the impact it was going to make until I got into the thick of it. And I was like, wow. (laughs) Okay. So I did know a lot, but also this has really provided me the opportunity to shift my perspective and not only give me the permission slip to take the action and take that first step and get it off the ground and go, but also really, really get aligned with the way that my messaging was being conveyed to my people to make sure it was calling in the right people and really articulating the right message for the transformation that they were going to experience. And so again, I think it's like, I know I'm made for impact. And so I'm like, well, that's enough. And it's like, Mm. well, that's great. But if people don't know what that is and they're not able to articulate, even simply using that word community is so misconstrued 
every single day. Because I think so many people get fixated on a having to look a certain type of way yeah, for or sure. it feels like warm and fuzzy and hugs and feelings, which yes, it can be all those things, but can also be like compound revenue growth and better client retention and higher quality leads and referrals and power partnerships and more strategic pieces. And so it was really up to me. It's not up to everybody else to figure those things out. It's up to me to do a better job of really relaying that to people people and making it meaty and tangible and something they can dig their teeth into. And that is what FBL did for me was really allowing me to take a step back and say, okay, I know it's good, but if I'm going to sell it, I need to make sure that it's crystal clear on what people can expect. And all of its goodness is very visible. And that is honestly what it created for me. And I'm so grateful because I would just probably still be over here. I was telling her earlier, designing a workbook or yes. doing something that I was caught in the weeds on that quite frankly, even if we had a workbook, I'm about while we're recording live, I'm going into the last week of this first cohort. It's a three month program and they wouldn't have even used it. They literally wouldn't have even used it. And so I'm like, I would have allowed that to, de to derail my progress to be something that I asked them, if we had a workbook, would you guys want it? And they're like, meh. I'm like, yeah, yeah totally. Great. Perfect. I, <laughs> I think to your point, thank you for just re emphasizing that permission slip piece because it's so easy to wait and be in perfection paralysis and think it has to look a certain way. And what we're A, doing is wasting time, our most precious, valuable commodity, and we're wasting our money because we're not leveraging our talents. We're missing out on serving people. But I'm such a fan, and we were recording this earlier on your show, of monetizing as you build it. And so the framework is never really, quote unquote, done, yeah. right? If you are a person Person that demands excellent and wants to serve your, your clients in the highest capacity, you're constantly asking questions about, is this working? Well, how can we do it better? And so I think the more, the quicker you put it out there, the quicker you get that feedback, the better it becomes at a faster rate mm -hmm. and the more results are delivered. And so if you're struggling in that perfection place, come to our side of the world. We'll <laughs> help you take action on it. Um, but it was like such a great example. The other day I downloaded this, this, uh, a person I follow that's a launch specialist, I downloaded a freebie. It was like 50 pages and it was literally just a Google template. Like I'm pretty sure she just went on a walk and voice dictated like all this stuff onto paper. And I actually needed that from her too, because yeah. I've gotten more into that place. I'm already like kind of anti Canva templates in general, cause they're just not so personal. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also needed to see this 50 page messy and I got a lot of value out of it. And yeah. I think, I really think the trend is getting back to that place. We're not, we're no longer bullshitted by like prettiness and aesthetics. Um, and so those of you getting hung up in that place, it's actually about the meat, um, mm -hmm. that that people want, I think nowadays. Yeah. And like the things that I would get caught in are so silly, like naming, can, like what something should be called. And I like, you know, alliteration and playfulness, you know, and all these things. And we're like my business partner for collab. She's like, literally nobody knows what this means. Like when we're designing things together, she's like as simple and straight to the point as possible. I'm like, but it's not fun. And she's like, we don't need fun. Fun doesn't make dollars. <laughs> no, I mean, and you saw that in FBL when it comes to naming. I'm pretty hardcore on the yeah. naming conventions because everybody does. People think they have a, a framework because they came up with a you know, clever acronym that fits with the word brave. And I'm like, but nobody knows what the brave method is. And you don't actually have a framework. You have some words that you crammed into an acronym and they actually don't create results. And so mm -hmm. it's not a framework. It's an acronym and that's okay. But truthfully, we want our titles of our workshops, of our frameworks, of our programs to be enough elusive that it draws us in, but to be clear enough that we know the outcome. And I think a lot of people do get stuck. You know, Marie Forleo always says, a confused mind says no. And so we want to make sure in business we're thinking about being as clear as possible with our language. Yeah, for sure. And I think you're totally right. I tell people all the time, if if we say for, we're for everyone, we're for no one because yeah. nobody is going to self-elect to be like, she's obviously talking to me. <laughs> so I think that it is, it's our responsibility as business owners to really convey that. It's nobody else's fault if it's confusing. 
right? Yeah, it's up to for us sure. to figure out and figure out what that verbiage is. What are they using? What is the actual terminology they're using when they're talking about the areas that they're struggling in? And how does my offer align with that? And how can I make sure to convey that in a way that is calling their attention, if you will, catching their attention with some of the terminology that they would use to describe those same issues? Totally. I'm curious because I think there's other people listening that think they have a framework or have their process slacked down and they're kind of like, well, I don't know if I really need to go through um, the FBL. What would you say to that person um, that was in some ways where you were, but maybe in the midst of creation Mm -hmm. feels kind of confident or like they've already had something created? Yeah. I just think outside perspective is everything. And I just think for me, it's, it's a little bit humbling to say, that I had space to learn, but I actually feel on the flip side, what I would have been robbed of should I not have taken that opportunity. And I think the FBL is so accessible that it is like the best fine tooth comb that you can have for designing your offer suite out there. And the thing that I loved was all of the visuals, right? Like the Venn diagrams and like the different visuals, you know, the boxes where it's a grid and it's very systematic to say, hey, before we go to step two, we need to go to step one and making it very, very intentionally designed rather than, I don't know about you, I'm a little squirrely. And so, you know, I may have all these things, but they're kind of in a notebook or they're in random voxers to myself or notes written down. And I think it really allowed me the opportunity to slow down and pause and really make sure like, hey, are all of my T's crossed? Are all of my I's dotted? And does this make sense? And you know, the other thing that it actually allowed me to do is really have the opportunity to then convey that to other people to say like, hey, I've gone through this process. You know, I have this four square grid and I've written this stuff down. And then like audibly articulate it to somebody else to really see if it was hitting or not, and then not allow myself to move forward into the next page. Because if that is clear as mud, then there's obviously work that needs to be done there. So I just think honestly, it was such a game changer for me. And I think you being an expert in that field speaks for itself. This is literally your zone of genius. So why would I try to be something that I'm not? It's it's not my zone of thank genius. So I'm you. just going to leave it to the press. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so glad that you took away that value and it just increased mm-hmm. the potency of what you already knew you were like sitting on top of. And that's really the goal is like, you are the expert, but how do we like it, make it even bigger and better and more robust and potent? Um, and you really drilled down into like feeling like, oh, dang, I am good at this. Yeah. And that's the feeling I want everybody to leave with and to see, you know, that they have this tangible transformation that they can create with people. So yay that you got that. I'm so grateful that you could spend time with us and really kind of give us like a high level view of the potency of community. Um, I know you run a group program now supporting this and leveraging communities. I would love for you to share with our audience, A, where they connect, can connect with you on socials to learn mm-hmm. more um, and just like a great way to start. Obviously, you have the Table podcast that just launched. So celebrating you. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that you are breaking through into the, the podcasting world and bringing on some amazing guests too. So tell us more where we can get to know you. Yeah, I also hang mostly on the gram <laughs> as our, I think, I don't know if we're elder millennials now, or I actually heard the term geriatric millennial. And I, felt, oh, I reject that one. <laughs> why are you offended? I was like, how dare you? But yes, I spend most of my time on the gram. I also am trying to um, reinvigorate my efforts on LinkedIn. So if you want to come hang out with me over there as well, my Instagram handle is I, no, that is not it. My Instagram handle is the Haley Westfall, H-A-L-E-Y-W-E-S-T-F-A-L-L. I'm also over on LinkedIn at Haley Westfall. Um, come hang out with me over there. If you are local to Arizona, I do host a series of in-person events, which are super, super fun and just a really great opportunity to connect in a more intimate space. Um, and yeah, you can listen to the podcast. And I am running my signature group program, which is called People to Profit. And it is really just empowering you with the tools necessary to strategically scale your big vision while leveraging a highly engaged community. So I am just such a firm believer that honestly, community is key to your next level expansion. And so really digging in and buying into that process will create absolute magic for you and your business. 
Oh my gosh. I love it. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad that we could connect. Absolutely. Thank you.